Hi, my name is Edgar. I'm from Hong Kong, and uh, I currently work in California at Netflix. Uh, previously, I worked at Docker as well. So my focus is on containerized workflows, engineering tools, and infrastructure at Netflix. Uh, the project I'm working on is actually distributing container layers through IPFS. Uh, we run a lot of containers at Netflix, as much as 3 million containers per week. So you know, innovating container distribution is pretty important. The reason why I think IPFS has the potential to change uh, how private infrastructure can operate is because in traditional architectures for distribution, you have a server and client. And you would scale up the servers sort of horizontally, put a load balancer on top, and maybe cache it with a memory databases. And then once you need the traffic to go to cross-region areas, you might want to mirror the content to different regions. Uh, all of this comes at exceeding cost and complexity. Uh, IPFS can operate as a CDN because we can actually decouple the definition of uh, what we want from how we get it. So using IPFS, uh, instead of getting the same data from across the world, uh, you'll get it from your neighbor instead. Another useful aspect that IPFS gives is the ability to chunk uh, contents into uh, various uh, blocks. And the way you do it can really depend on the data. For example, if we are splitting up a container layer, if we do it on the file boundaries, there's a greater chance of deduplication between the files. If we have greater deduplication between files, it means that not only do you have reduced storage requirements, the amount of network traffic you need to get the remaining data, uh, assuming you have deduplicated uh, container layers already, will be much uh, lower. So uh, overall, your throughput for container distribution is going to be much higher. Um, even sort of beyond that, uh, we can actually decouple the, the metadata for a file system from the actual uh, content of the files. So we can actually mount a few system that uses a manifest of file system met metadata serialized into some uh, short form content. And then uh, by distributing that, we can surface a, uh, a lazy file system that you can walk and traverse around without actually downloading any of the file contents. And then on demand, as the container executes and you require certain executables and files that you need to read, they are downloaded on demand through the same peer-to-peer uh, -peer interface that IPFS provides. So uh, there's a paper called Slacker that surveyed about 57 different containerized applications. And they found that only about 6% of the data is actually read. So uh, that means for a 10 gigabyte image, for example, we'll only need to about 60 megabytes to uh, actually execute the container. I, I think one of the most interesting characteristics of IPFS is that it's able to operate through many different transports. Um, what that means for uh, your everyday user is that you don't have to use the internet in order to access content from the IPFS network. Uh, you could be accessing content from your neighbor through Bluetooth. Uh, through infrared or through any other kind of transport. Uh, the internet is one way in order to access the internet, uh, access the content that you want, but that's not the only. And uh, on top of that, the components that IPFS has built out made it incredibly easy to find others that have the content you are looking for through all the means of transport that is available to you. So you could be looking on Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and the greater internet at the same time. Uh, this makes it much more efficient to distribute content, as well as much more uh, uh, faster to download all your content. Uh, I think for video transfer in particular, Netflix has its own sort of hyper-optimized infrastructure. So. Uh, the use cases I'm imagining for IPFS and Netflix is more catered towards uh, distributing software that powers Netflix rather than the video transfer itself. Uh, we have actually these things called Open Connect, which is hardware that we install where your internet providers are providing you internet. 
Netflix is providing you the video content. So uh, I think that particular niche is not going to be fulfilled by IPFS. I already s sort of envision a future where sort of BitTorrent or even peer-to-peer -peer protocols can share build caches such that if I start building my project in the cloud and uh, I'm up to 50% and a colleague wants to join in and compile the same project, they should jump straight to 50%, assuming they're building on the same uh, Git repository and on the same Git commit. So uh, this problem seems like it should be theoretically possible. Uh, just sort of four years, ago, four years ago, the protocols for peer-to-peer -peer connectivity wasn't as democratized as it is today with IPFS. So I, I believe that what Docker has done to Linux name, namespacing features is what IPFS has done for peer-to-peer -peer networks. Uh, has brought it to even the non-technical users and as well as uh, everyday application developers.